What up, everybody? Hey, it's the Sports Chasers Podcast, coming to you live and direct. I'm your host and your moderator, Kevin Alon, along with Daryl D. Del Warren, Dorian D.A. Aubrey, James the Angry One Warren, Mike Bill, and we got our man tonight, the hockey guy, Dan. This is the uh, sports podcast for real fans. Sports podcast where there's no hot takes, no narratives, just un, excuse me, unadulterated, real unadulterated sports talk. Please like and subscribe. We're currently live on YouTube. Um, and at times tonight, hey, it might be some colorful language. We are the defenders of the fans. Once again, I'm Kevin Owen, your host and moderator. This is the Sports Changes Podcast. Hey, tonight, tonight, we got a good, good lineup of things to talk about. We got hockey with Dan tonight. We got hockey with Dan tonight. We also talk about week, um, the NFL Week 15 review plus CTE, college football. D Dub will dive in with um, Jake Paul in that boxing match last last um, last weekend. He put my man to sleep. The Mets sign of Buck Showalter as their um, their manager. And we'll talk about a little bit of things, man. We're gonna meet the crew. We're gonna meet the crew going from my left to right. Hey, we'll start with Dan. Dan, what's up, brother? Okay. Dan, what's up? No, 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 no. There you go. Loose. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it took me took me a minute. Apologize. Okay, okay. What's up, man? Not much, man. Good to have you, man. Good to have you. Dan's Good in the house. Well, dude, uh, let me go to D dub. D dub, what's up, brother? Oh, what's up? What's up? Sports Chasers Podcast. We're back on Thursday night. What's going on? Thursday night. We had it. We had it. The angry one. What's up, brother? Fighting I-40. Traffic. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? What's going on, fellas, man? How y'all living, man? Let's go. He's, Let's in, go. A, he's, yeah. he's, in, a, he's in a good mood, man. So. Yeah, I don't know about all that, but, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the DA is with us, man. DA, what's up? Are you so, there? Yeah, I'm good. You got, you got the... Um... <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. You okay, got you got it. Yeah, all right. Did I do something? Yeah. Good. You got people it. Can't, people can't see me now. You got to unmute the screen. Uh, uh, okay, there you go. All right. There, there we go. you go, fam. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the A is team is um, in Tennessee tonight. The Niners are facing off against yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, man. yeah just, just before. Got just before I got going on, D-Dub was kind of pressing D-A. He hey, I'm good. The good. Niners. I was just doing my up-downs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, little drills real quick, making sure I'm ready for the game. Got my right cleats on. Um, sir, you know, two sir. Inch, two inch spikes on right now. Sir. Um, we, we ready to go. I just ready need to you to put some respect on their name, sir. Hey, man, I, I got, I got you know, 49ers gear all over my crib, so, you know. Okay. okay. Me, I, I've, I've been down since 1980, so, you know. I go way back to, you know, when we had the best offense and defense in the league in the same year. I don't think it's happened ever since. I think maybe once. Maybe once. But, yeah, yeah. Well, they're trying to secure a win, man. So they're trying to get in there. They're number six currently. Oh, we're, we're good. We're good. We're going in. Um, we're just not going to stay in because uh, we don't have that one position that um uh, necessitates being uh, where we need to go. But hey, coach. We're, we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Okay. Before we go to the NFL, go ahead, E. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, E. You had something? Oh no, nah, no, nah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't messing with DA tonight, man. <laughs> nah, it's all good. I, before Dan starts, I will, I will say this myself. This is my own uh, PSA to everyone. You know, whenever you hear that you got this brand new Wonderkin offensive coach in the NFL, talk about it. I'm 52 years old. Those dudes never win. Never win. It's usually a defensive-minded coach with a great offensive coordinator that wins the Super Bowl. Matter of fact, if you want to go historical, outside of Thomas Brady, Joe Montana, 
And Troy Aikman, you don't even need to have a great quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Coach for years. And Dan, I was a, a, a fan of the Steelers in the 70s. And Dan will tell you, coming out the 70s, no one thought of Terry Bradshaw as a great quarterback. No Facts. one did. Yeah, you're right about right? that. Right? No one thought of, No one said that about him. When we got to the 80s and we looked back at the 70s, no, oh, Terry Bradshaw, no, he won four Super Bowls, but everyone thought he was like, well, Jack Ham and Jack Lambert and L.C. Greenwood dragged them to a Super Bowl. You know, that was kind of what the story was. So I, I'm telling you, man, you know, you don't need to have a super quarterback to win a Super Bowl. You need to have a great team. You need to have a defensive-minded coach. You need to have a running game. That's my PSA for all the kids, all right? Just don't listen to the guys on TV. And, Dan, let's go to hockey. Well, just to touch on your point, we all know uh, Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. There you go. Case in point. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We were talking a little bit beforehand. Yeah. The Olympics is chalked. They're not going. Um, I saw, I think it was an article on ESPN where they agreed to let them go this year. And also, what is this? 2026 20, i think it is and yeah. italy is the next one that they were going to let them go to that one with the the agreement right. barring they had some sort of major impact to the season and like we talked about the last time i was on there was a little bit of uh i think it was ottawa and there was one other team at that time that was going through the the COVID thing. So they had canceled and postponed some games and whatnot. And now they pretty much as of, I think Tuesday was the last games that they played and they canceled the, I think everybody played Tuesday, but they canceled the whole thing. The only game that was played was I think Vegas and and the Kraken. So, Mm. you know, I mean, it is what it is. They're trying to get ahead of it. And, you know, I know that they, from what I was reading, they upped and their testing policies. You know, I think it's daily now when they come back. Because I think they did. Let me ask this, Dan, just to answer that. Is is it correct? I keep hearing that they're close to 100% of all the the players are vaccinated for the NHL. Is that correct? I think so. I think there's a few on each team. Okay. But for the majority, I think they're they're all tested or vaccinated. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was just simply going to say. So, what does that mean going forward? As far as um, you said for the Olympics, but as far as scheduling and and all that stuff prior to what we talked about earlier. Well, like I know we talked a little bit beforehand, but like I think. The also or the because I think it's February 3rd to the 22nd is when the shutdown was supposed to be. Part of that was the Olympics, part of that was um, the all star game in Vegas. And I think they're going to try to make as many games up as they can during that period. But like we were talking, you know, you got other things happening at venues across the country, you know, concerts and whatnot. Right. So the availability is going to determine, you know, how they work that out. I mean, that's probably going to be a huge nightmare because there may be some games that are supposed to be home games. Then they're now away games because there's no availability. We'll have to see. But I was reading like a lot of it, you know, was it the, the devils? I think right now are going through it, but not only are they going through it, so is their farm team. So they had a bunch of people go out. I think they called a couple up, and I think one or two of them popped positive, so they couldn't even play. Mm. So, you know, hopefully they're doing the right thing, obviously, by kind of shutting it down early. Because, I mean, it's Christmas break, you know. Right. Give them a couple extra days now. You know, I know it's a huge deal for the players that they can't go. Right. And play and play in Olympics because I saw you know Crosby had a 
they had a thing on him asking about it. And, you know, he said, you know, some of these players, they're at the end of the careers, they're playing good. Another four years, they might not be around. They might not have the opportunity. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge deal for them to represent their country, which, you know, I, I, I think we can all agree that would be an yeah. awesome thing to do. Absolutely. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, they can't, they can't change what's going on in the real world. They can't control yeah. something. So, you know, they got to do the best they can. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, like this little break can get some of them through that protocol. And I know, like the NFL, if you're vaccinated and stuff, as long as you hit like two tests, two days in a row or something, you can come back early. Hopefully, they can figure that out and, and try to keep the rosters, you know, the main players. Well, you know, Dan, like I said before, I, I just, as you said, like real world conversations um i applaud um the nhl for putting the money to the side because of course we know you, you know you're losing money right uh because uh, you don't have games um uh, you you are alienating some players as you just stated because they can't play in the olympics and that's a different conversation because that's out there in china and when you're not sure of how they're what their security is like and, and what they're doing as far as folks coming in and out of venues, so forth and so on. I can understand the NHL kind of protecting um, their product, you know, but I think it was a smart idea to kind of just stop for a second, um, take a step back, you know, see what can be done regarding, you know, um, the, the, the variants, COVID, and, and its relationship to hockey right now, right? So we can start having games and have a sustainable plan rather than not have one. You know what I mean? So I think in the other sports, they're just trying to play through it. And, of course, you know, trying to solve the problem and still make money. And sometimes it just doesn't work because you're going to keep having sick guys. And, you know, when you have a sick guy or, you know, a girl there, part of the team in the building doing this doing that not knowing they're sick you know and you're changing what the protocols are now well we could test you every day and if you're okay today then you are right yesterday but we have situations where guys played on sunday sick and on monday we're putting a protocol yep. that's a problem man that's a problem oh 100%. that means that means these guys were sick playing the game on Sunday. Not saying that they were, phys- you know, coughing, wheezing, but from the medical perspective, they were symptomatic. It was in their blood on Sunday, and then they played the game on Monday. I mean, on, and then they, they played the game on Sunday sick. And on Monday, they get put in the protocol. Which right. means Sunday, was, so that means everybody that we want to feel with. Every day they were in the building with that they hugged at the end of the game and give the soul man Gay shake. Daps. And yeah, and, yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> you, know, yeah, you had COVID. You got yeah, COVID. You, had, you had COVID, Delta, Omicron, Epsilon. Well, think about it in the workplace. You know, what happens if somebody, you know, comes down with it? All right. Who, who had close contact with them? Oh, they, they, they need to, to abide by you know staying home you know and getting tested and make sure they're okay 14 so, days it, so you know by putting them out there when they're not not well or not knowing they're not well but that i think that's where you know the nhl kind of stepped up like like now nah, we're going to do this every day right so if you have a game that night you get tested before the game if you're good you're good and then test you the next day and if you know you test positive well then apparently somebody out there chances are is the one that gave it to you so now you can figure out who who has it and separate them yeah, oh, yeah. Do that, that trait i bet i bet not start this but it seems like the nhl got it right they they seem to care about their players but well, okay. you got to look at it this way too what's what's your top sports 
<laughs> name it. Name in order what the top sports are. Football, revenue wise. Oh, football. Okay, uh, then the yeah, number one. Then the then, NBA is probably or college sports, of course. I, I could wrap them all in one thing as far as financially with college sports, mate. Um, they're probably up there with the NFL, if not higher. But then basketball, right? Yeah, yeah, so you got like you got the fifth guy in the totem pole, yeah, taking the extra precautions because right. football, basketball, baseball, college sports that's yeah. where the money is. And <laughs> like that, them canceling games and stuff, yeah, it's going to cost them money and they're going to try to get them in. But at the end of the day, if you have to shut down the season, that's more costly than missing a yeah. game or two. Oh, yeah, true. And I, 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 I that's some, I, you know, that's. I'm just thinking of a father, as a parent, you know, just a concerned citizen. Like, man, it, I, I would feel better if you just said, listen, man, we're going to stop everything for a minute, try to figure out, you know, who's got it. If we're testing every day, you know, we'll, we'll eat the course of testing every day. And, you know, if you got it when you come in here, then you can't do the rest of it the rest of the day. No way lifting, no this. You can't go to classes. You got to go home jump on your zoom and do whatever you do from there you know we, we're not gonna have it you know where dudes are out there sick playing with other dudes and they don't know it like we can't continue that well part of the problem too is is all the other sports excluding nca and the nfl they all have a mid-season break you know yeah. the all-star game for the baseball game basketball right. you have the same thing Hockey you have the same thing where in football you get a bye week and it can fall from anywhere from what week five yeah, to, to, five. to to fifth to fifteen yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. So they're playing every week. And that's you know kind of what hurts them is they they can't really just football can't really just stop. Or if they want to go, okay, hey, every game from this week. We're postponing. We're going to play at the end of the year, and give them that extra week to try to try to figure things out and get get people healthy, and make sure nobody's sick and that kind of thing. That's the only that's the downside of that sport is they don't have a mid mid season break. Well, then if the NFL wants to 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 own the calendar, as they say, uh, man, there's a whole lot of weeks in the calendar. Take your time, get it right. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Dan, let me ask you this question. Um, as far as hockey, do players with the NHL, you know, do they take pride in going to the Olympics? Do they want to go to the Olympics? Is it one oh, of those things? Yeah. Is it a big deal? That that's that's almost as big a deal as going to the playoffs. I mean, to play for your country, that's yeah. one one like if you watch any interviews or videos coming out in the next i don't know week or two about them not going that's that that's one of the things that, that they'll all hit on is like we really want to go but we understand right our decisions because before this came out there it was going to be a hard decision regardless because i know it was something like there was a possibility and I want to say it was five weeks of quarantine, Ooh. you know, depending if they went or not. So, so you mean five weeks guys? Like, I think like go. It, it, if they go, they may have to stay in that country a little bit longer to make, sure, to make sure they were good to come back. Yeah. yeah I can see it happening in Canada because, uh, Canada is strict. Not with the yeah, they're very strict. That, the, 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 that was oh, sorry. No, yeah, that, that was one of the things like when they first were gonna kind of slow down the the break, it was there was gonna be no games between US and Canada. Hmm. They were just gonna, you know, the Canadian teams that were playing each other, they play each other, they don't go out of the country. Same with the US, they don't go up and play any of those teams. But then they just, as it unraveled, they're like, nah, pfft, shock it all. We're going to shut down now. 
Hmm. Gotcha. Well, to kind of keep it on the ice. So who's who's your top who's your top teams right now? Would you say right now in an NHL who's playing who's playing good and who sucks right now? We'll, we'll put it like that. Well, I mean, five? if you want to go from last year, Anaheim, Calgary, Minnesota. Let's see who else is here. Detroit's playing well, and the Rangers. That's probably the the top four team ish that were not very good last year that are really playing well this year. And of course, you know, Carolina, Washington, Tampa, I don't know how Tam or Toronto is doing it, but somehow they're getting by being second in that division. Um, St. Louis and Nashville, like Colorado, they're slipping a little, but they've played four less games than anybody in their division. So three or four. And then, you know, Vegas has come around and got back to the top of the Pacific. Are you precluding your team? Because it looks like your team is playing. Well. I mean, I mean, we've we had injuries, people out COVID, blah, blah, blah. Not really an excuse, but we've won seven straight. So we're starting to play well again. And I know me and you talked about this, Kevin, the other day. But you gentlemen want to check out a ridiculous save, go on YouTube. And watch Malkin Subban from Buffalo stop Rod Rodriguez from the Penguins the other night. He got the, the dude shot from the one side. He stretched the blocker and the stick out, and his arm was behind him, the glove hand, and it hit the glove hand before going in the net and bounced out. Whoa! Wow. It was oh. it was absolutely ridiculous. Oh, Dan, <laughs> explain explain to some of our viewers that some may not watch hockey. And explain to them what the block is and, and, and all that stuff. If you all right. So when you're when you're looking at a goalie, right. of course, they have their two arms. There's a lot of different styles, but like if I was going to play goal, I'd probably play glove in, in this hand, stick in this hand. But you would have the trapper, which is the glove hand where you can catch the puck. Then the other right. side, you would have the stick and you would have what they call the waffle board that's above it to block the puck out. So he was going with the blocker and the stick to one side and his other arm was behind him. And I don't know how he did it, but the puck hit the glove and bounced out of the net. Wow. Hey, sometimes incredible save. Oh, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. They showed yeah. it. I don't know. 15 times during the game, yeah. slow motion, the whole nine yards. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Goalie standing on his head, man. That's, I mean, it was like Dominic Hasek of Buffalo of old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it was, uh, it was uh, crazy. Back, uh, back, uh, um, Dan, who's the best goaltender you've ever seen in, 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 Patrick. in your opinion? Who's the best goaltender ever? I don't know. Like, I've watched a lot of hockey. <laughs> we know. Like, that's back, all I mean, Back in the day, like Billy Smith, uh, Ron Hextall was really good. Uh, uh, Grant, Grant Fuhrer from the Oilers the in their heyday. Who was that again? Were, Grant Fuhrer from the Grant Oilers. Fuhrer. Back, Grant Fuhrer. Fuhrer. Yeah, back yeah. in the day, he, he was spectacular. Um, but, like, I guess when I got older, prob probably Patrick Wall. Like, Dominant goalie. Dominant goal. I mean, you could tell that that dude's got a screw loose and he's a competitor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like <laughs> you look at the, you know, the games they have with Detroit where he skates out the mid ice and starts fighting people. Yeah. I mean, the guy cared, but I, I, I probably would say he's probably one of the best that I've watched. Gotcha. What, what makes a good goalie? And you got, well, one, you got to you got to have it like no memory. Like if you give up a goal, forget about it. It's going to happen. But the other thing is, is you got to be agile. Like Flurry, you know, his time in Pittsburgh, even when he was Vegas, even now when he's in Chicago. I mean, the dude, he's just he can cover the whole net. Him right. and like I say, uh, Jonathan Quick are the the Kings. Like, I know quick I know quick's old older yeah and not in his heyday anymore well, he stopped dude, us from getting oh, that, a, um cup in 2016 but whatever yeah yeah that dude <laughs> he, he he was pretty spectacular too 
you know, in the past. But I, I'd probably say Wall, like, is probably one of the best that I've watched over the years. Gotcha. Why? Oh, why? So it's not Mike Richter uh, from the Rangers. Though. No, man. no, that dude. I, I, t- I <laughs> tell you what. Good, no, he was good. He was, you, yeah. No, here, here's that was thing. my man back in the day, boy. Mike Richter, boy. Yeah. You got. You guys have been blessed. You had Van Beesbrook. You had yeah. Richter. Oh, Beasy. You had uh, the King Henrik Lundqvist. Yes. Lundqvist. Yeah. I mean, and probably yeah, one of these two that you got now that Gorgiev or who's the other guy? Really yeah. Nope. He's pretty good. Yeah. The you know that's I liken the goaltender to the quarterback. It's the most important piece that you have on the ice at any time, because whatever guy makes a mistake, he can make up for that and, and bail you out, just like a quarterback would in a game. You miss a handoff, guy runs the wrong route or whatever. Yeah, yeah. he'll find the open guy. So. To me, that, that if you don't have goaltending, you're not yeah, going to yeah. win the Stanley Cup. It's not like you could have a Trent Dilfer and win a Super Bowl. If you don't have a good goalie, that's 100. It, it's not going to happen. That is a fact. Where, where, where would you rank uh, Martin Brodeur? New Jersey I, I'd say he's probably. Wow. No, no. I'd say, I'd say he's I was, probably I was, behind. I was on the Devils back then. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. yeah he, he's probably right behind Patrick Waugh. That yeah, boy he got was them bad. Two goals. He got them yeah. the two cups in the nineties. Oh yeah. God! He used to yeah. kill us. I hated when we played them. <laughs> that. We we had some golden. We had some golden times watching the Rangers and the Devils uh, in our time in the nineties. Right. Man, hey, that was like some hey, of the best hockey ever. Hey, you know we talk about who changed the game. The Devils and their they play. They in that they defense. style of play. That defense yeah. changed. Talk about that for two minutes. Neutral yeah, zone. Yeah. What, what happened with that? Why did that go away? Well, the Devils caused that a lot, but go ahead. Oh, me? Yeah. They got, they got, they got rid of the red line. Yeah. So back in the day, if you were in your defensive zone, the pass had to hit the guy before he got to the red line. The red line. So now that line is non-existent except for icing. So you can pass it from behind your net to a guy standing on the blue line on the other end and go in. So it made it harder for them to play the trap because, yeah. Uh, so really you, so you mean to NBA. tell me that hockey is also another sport that tried to uh, 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 decrease defense so these these great players can be greater and put up more numbers? Oh, who would have Absol- thought? Absolutely. They, they got rid of the red line to open the game up. Sounds familiar. And if you ever watch Connor Mc, uh, McDavid play from the Oilers, yeah. <laughs> that boy, he, he there, I, there's no one that can catch that dude. I, I'm convinced that dude's so fast, and you you put the puck on the stick, super fast. He doesn't he doesn't even get he doesn't get slower. He gets faster. So that so that in essence got rid of the they do they still have the two line pass? I'm just asking. No, no, because no, of because of that rule, right? Yeah. So. Basically, you can't pass inside your blue line to inside the other blue line. Correct. The guy has to be outside the blue line. Gotcha. Makes sense. Eric, that's a very good point that you made about, you know, all the sports increase offense and penalize defense, so to speak. Cool. So I guess just get ready for the NCAA to uh, outlaw the 2 3 zone. That'll be coming next. Syracuse won't have no identity whatsoever, even though they. So wait, they're gonna right make now. the wait. They're gonna make them check their man because the NBA certainly doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah, they, well, yeah, it'd be easier for them to go to the pros. <laughs> you don't need no college. You ain't playing no defense anyway. So, no. Nope. So is the NBA still just man on man, no zone? No, nah, they got zone. They they play I, zone, but they don't play zone. Yeah, I was gonna say. I thought ball. they made that legal that they could play yeah, zone they, if they, they wanted zone. to. They play zone. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. It's just it's very little. They play defense, but they don't play defense. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, the zone's enacted. Um, it's it's a situation where reality is that they can't, even if they wanted to. You know, it, it seems that way. Mm-hmm. You know, when you watch games, even even when you want to, you can't. Um, but I think a change is coming. So I, I I I'm I'm with the thought police. So you know, I, I'm I'm going to make sure that we we. Get that taken care of in the next year or two. So, 
But no. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry, Dan. <laughs> Don't worry, man. Don't worry. We, we, man, we're okay. That's, 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 um, that's Dan with the, um, with the hockey tip with us. Dan's going to hang around and we're going to talk about so, Talk I got about one more the, question for Dan. Yeah, go ahead. One more, one more thing for Dan. Go ahead. So, Dan, coming out the break, um, and we understand that in hockey, you know, that um, especially in the second half of the season, if you start off slow, you go. Like this, like this catching up games is very hard to do in hockey. Making up games is extremely hard to do in hockey. Um, and I don't see any teams with any, you know, definitive super leads. In any conference right now, um, it, it looks, you know, 20 wins to 15 wins in the Atlantic, which is four or five teams. Uh, the Central, we got 19 wins to 14, 15 wins. So that's six teams right there. Uh, Metropolitan, 21 to 17. It's a little tight, only four teams there. And in the Pacific, 20 to uh, 18, 15 wins. I get 15 wins to put you down to the Sharks. Um, who do we see coming out of this break, taking advantage of the break the most and kind of trying to either uh, uh, solidify where they're at or maybe leapfrog some other teams to get to where they would like to go? You know, who looks prime to, uh, or is playing the hottest going into the break? And it wasn't a break that they knew was coming, but it was a break nonetheless. So, well, it, it depends, I guess, how you want to look at it. Like a lot of the teams, I think it was when I was watching the Kraken game the other night, and they put up a stat, and it was Vegas, Tampa. I'm trying to think of the third, but how they started out the season, they were like two and five, three and five. And since then, like they're, they've lost like four or five games a piece. So like they kind of ride the, sh the ship right away. But like one team, I think, I, I don't know why I, I feel this way, but I know who the Islanders have and how they can play. And at some point, they're going to get their stuff together. And I think that's probably, I look for that team to not be behind New Jersey, who has a lot of young kids behind Philly, behind Columbus. I got a feeling that they can make, they can make sort of a run if they can right the ship. And even like Boston, I mean, Boston's usually a top two team in their division right now. They're fifth and they've got a lot of good players. I mean, their goaltending, you know, with them not having uh, Rask being hurt and not signed at the moment. But, you know, if he gets healthy and they can sign him and get him back, uh, I, I think they'll they'll make a run. I'm trying to look to who else is actually playing decent. Like Colorado's back on back on the thing. They're seven two and one in the last ten. I just think that like they were with Tampa and, and Vegas, they kind of had a, a crappy start. Well, what team before we, before we segue into the other squads got to piggyback off of DA, what team that you see that's at the top of the standings could possibly slide down. That's kind of like uh, having a fluke of the season. Hmm. Looking at it, who like Anaheim's kind of like a big shock to me. Like, I didn't think they, they would be where they're at right now. And the other thing, too, is, like, just looking through these stats and stuff, you know, a lot of teams have played 30, 32, 31, 30 games. But there's a whole bunch of other ones that, like, I would just play 26. They got four games in hand. If they can win all four, that's eight points. Right. You know, and that would take them from 22 to 30. And then, you know, they'd be ahead of Philly. I think Montreal is just, they're done for. They're not going anywhere. Arizona, the same thing. Wait to see where uh, Kessel gets traded to. But before we segue on, just want to give the Kraken watch. So they got 23 points. There's what, one, two, three, 
four other teams below them. So for the expansion team, they're still not dead last. So they're doing okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the, to go to what you were saying, so it's, it's safe to say the, the Vegas Knights were, the Golden Knights, they were the best, hands down, I guess the best hands down um, expansion team that ever played, so to speak, their first inaugural season. Oh, absolutely. No. Because nowhere in any expansion to date were that many good players, one, left available, two, so many side deals to keep their players that they wanted to keep. So they would say, hey, take this guy, and we'll give you this draft pick and this draft pick, whatever. So they set themselves up really good. Now, so they, go ahead. you know, at the same time, the Kraken – now, they drafted a really good team. I mean, if you look at the names that are on the roster, those, I mean, they got D, uh, Giordano from Calgary. He was their captain. You know, they got Everly from the Islanders. They got um, McCain that used to play for the Penguins that went to Toronto. They got him. They got Tana from the Penguins. Um, I'm trying to think who else they got. They got uh, was it Gord from Tampa Bay. I mean, they don't have a ton. They got Morgan Geeky that used to play for Carolina, played for Charlotte here. Right. So, I mean, it's not like they got a, a bad roster. It's just chemistry. You know, hockey is a team sport. So you got to get time together, no tendencies and that kind of stuff. Like all these other teams, they've all been playing together. And you just figure you just took, you know, one player from 31 teams and put them on a roster and expect them to perform like they've been playing together for a couple of years. It's not going to happen. Right. So for them to be doing what they're doing, you know, it's pretty impressive. It's just going to take them time. You know, if they can keep the core of their team together, probably in the next year or so, they'll be farther probably you know two three four spots up in that division because you got free agency you got drafting right. you know you can make your roster a whole lot better in a short period of time especially with the cap you know a lot of these teams like tampa bay they've been they've been at the cusp of the cap for the last two years and i think the only reason last year they could do what they did is um oh what the hell is his name is it Kalorn? i think it's Kalorn. he they had him on ir most of the year so they could bury his contract and not not go over the cap and still be able mm. to field a good team but we'll see you know there's a lot of hockey left to play you know you figure there are some teams eight eight games away, nine games away from being halfway through. Okay. So there, there, there's time to, to make the playoffs, but you got to play the lights out. You know, some of these teams that are 10, 15 points behind the fourth place team in their division, or, well, I guess now they take the top two, then the top eight of the conference. So it can be done. You just got to, Get it together. Last thing on hockey, and then we're going to move on to the NFL. Um, Because Dan beat me up last week when I said I didn't spend. I said I was going to talk hockey, and we didn't talk hockey. My bad. <laughs> um, um, the Winter Classic, where is it going to be played at this year? And who's the two participants? That's a, that's a good question. I think well, I think I showed you the, the jersey from Nashville. Yes. Man, is that thing ugly. So the game's that's, in Nashville. That's how I'm trying to – because it's usually, what, January? Usually January 1st, yes. Trying to see – well, they play Chicago on the 1st. Chicago and Nashville for the Winter Classic. Let's see. Then explain to our fans, what is the Winter Classic in hockey? Brings it back to the old days when you were on, on the pond – no boards, no glass. You just to play on a pond. So it's an outdoor game. And 
back in the day, that was the only outdoor game. But now they've been doing a lot more where not only do you have the, you know, winter classic, but then you'll have one or two other games. Because I think the Kings played San Jose, I think it was, in Dodger Stadium. Boston, I think the Devils played at Fenway. What was it where it was like crazy snowing? I remember that. Well, well when, when Pittsburgh played Buffalo in Buffalo. Yes. It that was, was great. And it, oh, and it went to a shootout. Right. <laughs> That was awesome. The guys had the the hats on and everything. That was that was hockey. That was that was pretty dope. So, to to the Winter Classic, it's going to be Minnesota and St. Louis. Okay, but I believe that's why I'm saying I think Nashville has an outdoor game also. So Minnesota, they'll play that game in where uh, where the Bush Stadium, I guess, where the Cardinals play it. I'm a, I'm. A- uh. Yeah, Tar- Target Field. Oh, okay. They play in Minnesota, so they play. Yeah, so Minnesota. They play um, where the um the Minnesota Twins play at, man. So, uh, we're gonna segue to hockey. Thank you, Dan. Dan's gonna hang around with us and talk with other stuff. Dan is the man when it comes to hockey. We love Dan. Thank you, Dan, again for coming through and and giving us more insight on hockey. I know hockey, but I don't know it like Dan. And I'm a firm believer of making sure that. If I don't know something, man, I get somebody very smarter than me that knows <laughs> Dan is the freaking man. Since I've known him, I've known him over 10 years. He knows hockey. He loves yeah. hockey. He sleeps hockey. And he's mad that there's no hockey going on right now. So, Well, I, to touch on that, looking over my shoulder here, it's 4-2 Canada World Juniors against Russia and about six and a half minutes left in the second period. So we'll, we'll see if Canada holds on. You know what I'm saying? He's he's the he's a hockey guy. That's why we got him. We love that man. Let me let me read this. Let me read this. I'm, the guys hate when I read, but I, I gotta I gotta get some context to this. So this is from USA Today, um, and I'm just gonna simply read it. We'll transition to the NFL. Talk about CTE for the next ten minutes. Um, Philip 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 Adams, the former National Football League player who in April shot to death six people and killed himself in. Rock Hill, South Carolina, suffered from the debilitating brain disease, chronic traumatic anopalopathy, known as CTE. The doctor who conducted the brain study announced on Tuesday of last week. Anne McKee, a a neuropathologist who is director of Boston University CTE Center, led the examination of Adam's brain and presented the findings during a news conference that included Sabrina Gass, the coroner of York County, North of uh, York County, South Carolina. They got North Carolina, but it's South Carolina, where the killings occur. McKee said Adam suffered from severe frontal lobes da- lobal damage similar to what was found in Aaron Hernandez, the former National Football tight end, and who was convicted of murder in 2015 before killing himself in 2017. CTE, the neuro the general disease linked to concussions and repetitive head trauma from football and other contact sports has been associated with behavior and mood changes according to the Mayo Clinic and multiple studies. So as I said last week, and there's more to this article, I'm not going to read it too much, um, but um, we just wanted to touch on CTE and, you know, they really didn't even, to me, those of the... Um, mainstream media they didn't give it you know too much they one liner and and that was it um and me and da talked about it i'm gonna start with da about the ct what's what's your what's your thoughts on this finally also they found it in vincent jackson too he had stage two um cte um Um, listen man i love football i really really do love football i played football a lot of years and and I'm not sure as I get older where, you know, what, where I'll sit in all of this, but as of today, I'm all good, right? Um, the, the point I make to everyone is this, man. All these stations, everything that you're watching on TV, and this is why I'm, I'm, I guess I'm real happy that there are podcasts and people are, 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 are doing podcasts um, that, that folks are, are not just on, you know, Fox, ESPN, 
NBC, CBS, uh, and, and others, other uh, stations, um, because most of these stations are in the NFL's pocket. And the reason why Kevin said you only hear one line here and there, and in some places you didn't hear anything, which is surprising to me, um, that you know there wasn't a story, a long story on ESPN, and there wasn't someone following up on this on Fox, is because you know you can't let this story out because moms are starting to let their little kids play football again. You know, uh, it's it's no longer the boogeyman sport. Now, it's not what it was, but it's no longer the boogeyman sport. Um, so they don't want this to come out, that this is where their kids can end up or, or this is where folks can end up. And, and listen, um, I know in other sports, you know, I think there's probably, uh, and I may get this wrong, uh, but there are injuries, and I'm just, this is why I'm going to say it this way. There are a lot of injuries in high school cheerleading. Um, I, I know there are injuries in basketball, head injuries. And I know in, in football or soccer, there are a lot of concussions there as well. Um, so it, it's everywhere. And we just need to, as a society, look into every sport where these things happen and try to figure out what the number is um, where we can kind of say, okay, look, you've had four. It's time to stop. And, and it may be different for different people, but right. we have to find somewhere where we can kind of rein it in because this is going to continue to happen. And the reality is the dudes that are that are going through it, um, I've heard on many occasions that, you know, they'll they'll go through this. And if this is the price to pay for their families to be all right financially um, down the line, they would gladly, you know, go through this. And this is just conversation from Ex NFL players that I know, you know, dudes like, listen, yo, if this is what it has to be. This is what it has to be, but my people are okay. So um, it, this is deep and it's serious. So, and I, I don't, I, I think it's going to change the game, uh, but not as much as I used to think. I used to think the game was going to, you know, further go to a game where poorer people or people without means would play the games like gladiators to get out of their situations. But the reality is that I don't think so anymore. Um, I think football is back to where it was because, you know, the NFL has such a stranglehold on television. So, you know, that's why you don't hear about it. And that's based on that stranglehold. So that's what I'm going to say. And we'll go around. I'm going to have to agree. I don't think I don't think the game is going anywhere. I mean, I think there's so much money to be made and these guys make a lot of money uh, to play a sport. So, um, you know, as unfortunate it is to with CTE, I don't think people are going for a goal, not making money and not play the game, especially if they could they could put their family in a <clears throat> or loved ones in a certain situation. So. And if that they're that good at, at what they do. But you can't have it both ways. Well, well, what you saying, sir? I mean, explain. You want the money, but you want to be protected by the NFL. Make up your mind. Well, can't we do both? Are, are we not intelligent enough to do both? I mean, we, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we can't. There's a, we can uh, I think you can come. do both. I think, I think... We, we, can, we can do as best as we can without cheapening the game. I think we could try to do that. But, I you know, I mean, I you know, I think, I mean, it. other than, you know, taking out the helmet shots and doing big hits, I mean, those, we, we start with that, we clean that up a little bit. And then, you know, we move on from there. But I mean, to say that 100% we're going, we're going to stop certain things from happening? No. Come you're on, not, I mean, no. you're not going to stop it. L- listen, no. the offense alignment and the defense alignment Bunt heads every time. Is that is that facts or what? They, fact. they go out there all the time. I just think that you can the in the NFL as an organization can protect players, but you can't protect players from the game. The game is the game. The game is the game. And if you read between those lines, 
there's nothing that can be done. It's inherent. Can, it's an inherent risk. It's yeah, a you can fall point. down without a tackle. You mm -hmm. cannot get tackled, fall down, and hit your head and get a concussion. You don't have to hit anyone to get a concussion. You can trip, fall down, and hit your head with your helmet on and get a concussion. I've seen it happen. And listen, and we can't we can't just say you know it's all on the NFL. You, as a player, have a responsibility too. If you know that you know your body, and if you think you took too many, then you need to step up and say something as well. I mean, you know, we know the NFL got to protect. You know, you we do got to protect yourself, protect people from themselves, but also people have to take a responsibility too. Guys, at this true. point. That's why that's all I'm saying. Medical professors, you know, they got the the con concussion yeah. protocols, and they take helmets from players and things of that nature. Hey, hey, what about my man? Where's Luke Keekley right now? Oof. Luke Keekley took a shot, and it looked crazy. And you know, he he never he's never he's never the same after that. Right. But again, he took he took his situation into his own hands and said, you know what. Uh, you know, enough is enough. You know? Got you. Eric, what you got on NFL and the CTE? Uh, I mean, basically what everybody else said is 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 I don't see how you you I don't see how you're gonna completely take it away. That's just not gonna happen. That's just like trying to say, oh, uh, we're gonna take away the common cold. Man, come on, man. That, that, Certain things is just going to happen, unfortunately. Um, injuries is part of the game. These players know it. I think, you know, is we are, we are further down the line um, in history now um, where it's out. You know what I'm saying? It's no more hiding it. You you know what it is. You you, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know what the what the damages are. It seems like it varies, of course, with anything else it varies from person to person but um it, it it i i honestly think people really at this point you really need to sit down when you're a teenager or whatever with your parents or whatever is this really what you want to do please understand the dangers of this game yes it's, it's, it's a one of the best games out there but is it is uh at times very violent and it's and and it's violent by accident you, you know are so, fear mongering. I will not stand for it. Okay, well, sit down. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know what else. I don't know what else. Um, they can really, they can really do about it. There's both sides. You know, you got those that say, "Hey, you know what Eric said." They're saying that he's creating hysteria and fear. Then you have the other one that's saying, "I'm not going to let Johnny play at all. He's not going to play nothing. He does no. I don't even want him playing Madden." Because that'll yeah. give him a gush. See, that's when you're going too far. Too far. You get, you're going too far, you, man. Yeah. Just to give an example, right? Because um, you know, far. I'm a forty. I'm a 49ers dude, but I don't. I would never get on any podcast or any you know um, platform and and just cheer for my team. But there was a dude about four or five years ago, man, named Chris Borland. You can yes. look him up, right? He was a linebacker, came out of Nebraska. Um, if I'm telling you he was the next Luke Keekley dude, he was. I think one season, his first season as a rookie, he might have had damn near 200 tackles, right? And I said, Dag, if Navarro Bowman comes back, and him and Patrick Willis, oh, my God, they come back from injury, boom. But they never came back from their injuries, right? And then the next year, Year two, had another 100-something tackles. At the second year, dude said, listen, man, I'm done. He said, adding up the, t the dings, uh, meaning when you get your bell rung, um, and the pros, plus what he remembered in college and what he remembered in high school, he was like, listen, it's too much. Now, the blessing is that financially from a family position he could do it right he could bounce he could just leave and not everybody could do that you know um and i tell dudes man when he left anybody that, that knows the nfc west knows this man was the best linebacker in that division for the first two years he was there period 
you know, side by the side by. This dude was a monster. But he took it into his own hands and say, yo, I'm out. You know, he may just have a regular job now, you know, because he left. You know, he may not long, have that I, I remember that. He play, how long did he play? He played two. not long. I think he played two, two years. years. He might have did two years. I don't even know if he did the whole two. And I remember the chatter that I, I remember the chatter and, and some of the talking heads is like, oh man, he's crazy and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, that man made a life decision for himself. Not mad yeah. at that. Yeah, well, that's what you gotta do, man. Yeah, for yourself. You can't do it for anybody else or for anybody, anybody else. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mike, what you what you got on CTE here, man? Everybody said it for the most part. Just it's a uh... It's, uh, it's, it's hazardous. I mean, it's part of the job. You know what I mean? It's It, it can happen. So, I mean, they could, you know, they already made rules with the how they want you to hit. And now they got this, the doctors on the sideline. You know, back in the day, it was, all right, you can see, cool, go back in. Like, you know, they trying to get rid of that. So, and then for the people at home, if your kids, you don't want your kids to play. Don't let them play. It's simple as that. We need more plumbers and law enforcement and teachers. So you ain't got to let your kids play. But if they do, just teach them safety. Just be careful. That's true. Dan? Well, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm just piggyback right. real quick off of what um, Mike said. Um, I think, too, if they really wanted to clean this up, you can't just start with the NFL. You got to go down to the Pee Wee League all through AAU and all that other stuff, man. You you, you got to start. You got to start them young. You got to teach them how to tackle properly and all this other stuff. And again, it's not going to totally take it away, but you, you, you will see less of this inability to tackle correctly on some plays that we see. That's, That's a good point. Got to bring the awareness to the kids, man. Good That's point. what I'm saying. Dan, CTE, and you played hockey before, so that Dan, you did. And, and and how come we don't see it as much in, a, or it's not talked about as much in hockey, because hockey is a, also a contact sport that, you know, they still slam you hard into the boards and stuff like that. Just don't talk about it. It's just not yeah. talked about. I don't even know if it's researched enough. Or no, even if, it even if it has been researched, they I'm not don't sure. make enough money yeah, like the NFL. Yeah, it so, doesn't matter. You know, oh, here goes Dan right there. Is, I'm, I'm sure. And they punch each other in the face. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure. I mean, you know, we talking about CTE and concussions and, you know, hockey players have their fair share of that stuff. But I don't know to what extent and it has it and what type of study has it, you know, has been done with hockey players. Dan, are you there? I think you got him muted, Kev. I think he had a. Okay. No, he's not muted no more. No. No. Stop video mute. Hold on. Dan, hit your mute button in your in your start start acts to unmute. Okay, I did. Yeah, because he had mentioned that in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Mikey, you Man. muted too. I see you Mike. talking. Mike. <laughs> Mike Five dollars for Mike. <laughs> he trolling. He muted me too. <laughs> Dan, well, 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 we'll keep working on on, on Dan. Go ahead, D uh, Dub. You were saying about uh, Yeah. I mean whoa, 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 whoa. Uh oh. Uh -oh. What? The, Fuck that now. The mad rapper. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Go, go ahead, son. Go ahead. See, dog, tell me why you mad, yeah, dog. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you why I'm fucking mad. <laughs> tell me why you mad, dog. Because you're mad, Jimmy G. <laughs> Yo, he's just doing... yards away from the end zone. <laughs> threw it to the other fucking team. All right, back to the show. <laughs> that, was mad, that, that, that was a mad... That was a mad... That was a mad... None. <laughs> that was a mad rapper. I, Dan, I was waiting for it, kid, because I'm sitting here watching it. You know, I, I saw it at the corner of my eye. I was like, "Oh God, this ain't gonna be good." Oh, <laughs> I looked. I was like, "Oh, he threw it to the other and, team." And, and please tell Mrs. Warren, 
your mother, I apologize for the yeah. language. <laughs> and, this and, this, and the lemon pepper chicken that yeah, we just yeah. lost. Thank you. Uh, all right. So I, I apologize. And I apologize to Jimmy G. Yeah. Don't apologize to him. He's sorry. I Dan. Dan. Dan, I don't have you muted, sir. Well, what happened? Tell him to tell him to um leave the leave and come back. Dan, Dan, leave leave the chat and then come on back, and we'll we'll, yeah, we'll get back. We'll to work you. with that. Yeah, we'll work with that. Um, so we'll get Dan's thing on on CTE. Real quick, we're gonna go to the National Football League Week 15 and review. Um, yeah, it's left. Yeah, go ahead and start with my team first, so I could get this shit over. With. I actually was gonna go to the Ravens, but since oh, you, okay, well, never mind. We'll go ahead, go to the Ravens. Yeah, uh, we talk about them dead birds. Go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the. Oh well, no, Dan is back. Yeah, okay, hold on a second before we go to the Ravens. Dan, can Dan hear us? So fucking done. Hmm. All right. Did, did Dan come in? Yo, D, you got to give him some credit, man. That was his first red zone interception since <laughs> 2019. He only played 15 games. 12 games since 2019. Dan, CTE. Hey. What, what's the thoughts on CTE with football and hockey? There you go, Dan. Uh, okay, I'm back. There yeah, you go, back, brother. Okay. Now, just there's a couple of things. Like, I was thinking, like, when you guys were talking about that, and I want to say, was it Dan Morgan for the Panthers that had the same issue? Yeah, you know, they, they, they came out of Miami. And I, I want to say, from back, back in the day with the Steelers, that, um, Mike, is it Webster? Yeah, I think th I think that's sound familiar. Th 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 he was the center for the Super Bowl teams, but right. I, I want to say that that contributed to you know when he passed from way back then. But yeah, like you know, hawk. Like I know you guys are asking about the hockey thing too, and um, is it Mark Savard that used to play for the Bruins and Matt yeah, yeah, Matt, yeah. Matt yeah Matt Cook. Hit him. Savard, he said, didn't he play with the Canadians as well? Mark Savard, was it Mark Savard? That's, he... Oh, that's I'm thinking of somebody else. It might be Dennis Savard. Dennis Savard. Dennis Savard, okay. you're talking about Daryl, correct. Okay. Because he played but, with the Blackhawks too. Yeah. But I think when Cook hit him, it was one of those, like he was coming out of the zone. Cook was coming in and blindsided him. He went down. I think Cook got spending maybe like 10 games or something, but the dude never played hockey again. And back in that era, you had Scott Stevens. He blew up, well, half the league. But he hit Lindros, and he he's never the same for the Flyers. And then he also hit Paul Correa. Fact, and, yes. And, never and the same. Never the same again after that. So, and oh, I'm trying to think, is it – I can't think of his first name, but uh, – the, it was, he was one of the fighters, uh, Bugard. Mm -hmm. And he had issues before he passed and, and related to that from fighting. So, and I, I'm sure Bob Probert, he probably had, had some issues with it. And I wouldn't be surprised if like Ty Domi, you know. Ty uh, Domi, uh, man. Uh, that's yeah, a, and I, and I, I, I hope not, I hope nothing becomes of it but like you you look at these guys that fought as many times as they did and like dummy man that dude he he's probably my size like 5'10 tough dude but he would fight anybody and he was, everybody all he was a the tough time. dude yes and, and like cam jansen's was another one that played for the devils and st louis and many other teams but like a lot of these guys that did fight on the regular basis back when it was required. Like, you know, Kevin, I had mentioned to you about the spitting uh, chicklets. Right, podcast. Po right. Podcast. And it, I remember listening to that in, um, was, it, was it Dennis Bonvey, I think it was, that they had on? And But they would talk about, like, you know, distress and everything else that would go into to knowing 
that you had a game that night and who the fighter was on the other team that you knew you were going to have to fight at some point. Right. And then, and then all the punches you take, you know, the guys that did it for a lot of years, like dummy and stuff, man, hats off to him. Cause man, you will go back and watch his videos, man. They were taking haymaker after haymaker and they just kept coming. Let me ask so, you this. Uh, uh, I'll, go ahead, Daryl. No, I, I just looked this up from, um, I believe this is the New York times back in uh, 2019. It was like, at least uh, nine publicly known cases of deceased NHL players are found to have CTE. Was it um, Dan had just mentioned Bugard, Bob Probert, yep. Steve Matador, Matador. I remember Probert. Mateo? Todd, Todd Ewing, I believe is, that's his name. Or, yeah, yeah e w e i n g or something. Yeah, you e w e n. Yeah, yeah, him, Todd. It says several older players reached the NHL died before age 40. Jeez. Had the disease, including uh, Andrew Carroll and uh, Kyle Rarup. Rarup. R A A R U P. Yeah, so, I mean, I wonder how many of these guys or their families uh, went after the NHL as some of these uh, NFL players did with the NFL. I wonder if that was. Uh, you know, if that maybe, was a thing or was maybe, it underneath the carpet too? Maybe that'd be Dan's homework for the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cap. <laughs> Dan, I'll send you the article. Hey, hey, you go. <laughs> yeah. But but like to the point, like it is a very physical game. Yeah. Even you know, I know we talked about his fighting down or whatever, and I think I looked at it before we got on. It was at least I don't know, 104. I think they were on pace for, if they play all the games, probably like 268, I think it was, they said, to projected. Mm. So, uh, and like, to on that point, you know, not only fighting, but just in what, since the last time I was on, um, Kara from the Blackhawks took a pass probably about six feet off the boards, just inside this blue line in his feet looking at it and i think uh, your boy from the rangers truba just smoked him and like mm -hmm. literally knocked him out on his feet like as he was going down they had to stretcher him off and then dallas against chicago Connolly from chicago came down the boards same thing just inside the blue man but this one was right. more right on top of the boards and he, he freight trained him and he was lights out on his feet too. And they had to stretch him off. So, I mean, between the hit and the, like the fighting is nowhere near like it was in the back in the day. Right. I mean, they, they, they made up all kinds of rules for fighting instigator. Now they have tie down straps that you got to have, you know, strapped to the back of your pants. So your shirt don't come off because Rob Ray would get down to his t-shirt every fight. So nobody had something to grab onto and he could just whip the wheels off you. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah. You go back and look at Rob Ray's fights. They're probably and Probert too. You know, I remember Rob and, Probert, yeah. Probably one of the best fights I ever saw was Rob Rob uh Robert Probert and Marty McSorley in Detroit. That thing went like seven, eight minutes. It's on YouTube. Check it out. But That's back to the back to the CTE thing. It it is it's prevalent in hockey, but I don't think it's talked about like it is in football, just because they're like back page news compared to the other sports as far as priority. That's so it's there, it's there and it's happening. It's just not talked about a lot. Gotcha. Appreciate you, Dan, on the on your thoughts on CT for NFL, the NFL and the NHL. Um, we're going to segue back to the games here. Uh, Mike, the, the, your Baltimore Ravens, eight and six, they lost by a point to the Green Bay Packers, 31 to 30 uh, last week. Winnable game, Mikey. You mean thoughts. the bruised and battered birds? Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, the Ravens, yes. Uh, Bruise and batter. Uh, are you making an excuse? or Nah, I'm telling the truth. I had low expectations coming in. <laughs> okay. uh, let me ask you, okay, before, let me, let, me, let, me, let me not do a hot take, but a hot take. But I heard this from another hot taker. 
Um, <laughs> is Huntley uh, is is he better than Lamar? Uh, come on, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mike, yo, yo hey, DA, the people want to know. The people want to know, sir. Stephen oh, no, A. Warren. No, no people want to know that stupid ass shit. No one want to know that. Look, Stephen A. Warren over there want to ask crazy questions. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> no, man. If like, Huntley was no, better, but, he would have got drafted. Listen, no, I heard something ridiculous this week. I was like, man, please stop, man. I, it, like you said, Mike, if he was better, he absolutely would be starting. He would have been drafted high, period. I think he plays a very serviceable game, very winnable game last week. What do you think about your coach going for it on um, going for two instead of for one? Would you I do mean, it? I mean, that's his thing. He liked to take the risk, and normally it thing. pays off. But this time it didn't. But I, in that situation, no Lamar, I wouldn't have did it. Huntley played a good game. Let's just try that over time. But with no Lamar, and Lamar, yeah, Huntley, no. It's just you got to know your personnel, know your situation. Y'all going to make the playoffs? Are we? We can. Should we? Hell no. But if we <laughs> want to mess up a draft pick, we can go. Have a cup of coffee in the playoffs and go home. Some crab cakes. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what do you think about Green Bay's play? Um, Green Bay do this thing where they start front running and then Aaron Rodgers be having to lock back in. So if they want to win, they need to stop doing that. Especially because now that other teams that were ahead of them are in shambles, they have any little mess ups now. They might as well, they better just get that division and lock it up. They got it. So get the conference. They got a lot of cats coming back too. Right. So go on and hit your stride now before it's too late. Especially while everybody else got issues. That's the best time. When everybody else fucking up, but you got your shit together. So, gotcha. Um, let me go to the let me go to Mikey. Now that I got you, um, not got your attention, but I bigged you up last week, and the only reason why I'm talking about this game is because I'm bigging you up. Not not because it's my Giants. The Giants are absolutely putrid. They're horrible. They're awful. They need to just start over. Just, ahead, just any more said, adjectives just, you got? Yeah, just, just start over, <laughs> Mikey. You said this when, 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 um, what's the what's the Cowboys coach name? Why well, I can't think of his name? Um, Jason Garrett, name? McCarthy, oh, McCarthy. McCarthy. When McCarthy got back day, you said he killer. was the running back killer. My question to you, Mike: Did he kill Zeke or is Zeke yep. not the same? No, he killed Zeke. Zeke, okay, Zeke had. Other issues, right? <laughs> so Zeke was going through a rough time. Right. But then McCarthy didn't help shit. That just, it was <laughs> like, oh, oh, word, I. Right. He just piled on. Yeah, because Zeke was starting to, like, in the offseason, he was starting to look better. He had, low, he knew he had gained weight. He had lost some weight. He was looking all right. But then, yeah, McCarthy and, yeah, running is back. Pa- is, is, pa- is Polly better than him right now? No. Nah, he just capitalizing. <laughs> As he should. There's nothing wrong with that. But nah, he's not. He's not I'll get season. the guys, the other guys' opinion. Is Eric, do you think um Pollard is better than Zeke right now? Hell no. Pollard is, is like like Mikey said, Pollard is capitalizing off of better blocking right now. Yes, I'm a conspiracy theorist, even with the Dallas Cowboy. They're they're uh conspiring against uh Zeke Elliott. D-Dub. The pilot is a small back, man. He's a, he's a, he's a elusive back. He's smaller. Zeke is the bigger elusive also back, but he's just bigger than Pollock. But Pollock, no, you're, if you're asking me if Pollock is better than Zeke, no, that's not, no. I mean, no. Flat out, no. Um, Got you. Dan? Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Nah. He's not better than Zeke. <laughs> like like I said, you know, he's a little bit smaller back. He it, it reminds me of like kind of like the third down guy. You drop the, the little, sw- little swing passes too and right. stuff. And the guy that you want to run through the tackles, that's that's Zeke. You know, but you know, to be honest, Zeke is he's he's struggled the last couple of years. Yeah. I mean, I mean, fighting injuries and whatnot, but I mean he's definitely 
he's definitely better than Pollard. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what's wrong with Zeke. I don't know why he's just not the same. He's just not the same. I don't know what's going on other than him. They're not giving him the ball like they they used to. But I don't know if that's play call. Yeah, play calling. Play right. calling. Uh, that's, that, that's what the truth is that you know not necessarily each play because you know if you don't know football like you can't i can't get into it as i guess as much as other guys can but down distance and situations zeke gets the ball in the wrong down distance and situation and his offensive line is not the offensive line that you know is going to uh, uh be able to do like they used to do and open up gaping holes you know um so the offense i'm not sure why zeke isn't doing it we're having those receivers he should have light boxes all the time so he should be good to go seven men in um you know four linemen three linebackers however you want to do it for whatever team but their defensive backs should be guarding um, you know, C.D. Lamb, uh, uh, 19 from Alabama. I'm sorry for his name, and the other guy. So, um, I don't see why it's not happening, it's just not happening, right? You know, because it's not like he ain't running hard. But if you watch the games, he's getting tackled. It's not like he's not trying to hit the hole, he's hitting it the way he used to hit it. He just don't come out the other side, you know. So I, I don't know what they're doing, you know. Yeah. And like Mike said, it could just be McCarthy in the way, you know, he calls plays or plays are called. I'll say that because he doesn't call the plays. So, hmm. um, Eric, the Cardinals went twenty five hundred miles to the Midwest to Motown. They lose to Detroit 30 to, 20, <laughs> 30 to twelve. Thoughts, your team, the Cardinals. The they fucking suck. Uh, I, I, I said it many times. Every time, just like last year, just like last year, they get in the first place, and then all of a sudden they look around the room, and I think they, I don't belong here, and then they start doing shit that makes them not belong there anymore. Uh, that that that's that's what I. I'm gonna tell you. Me and Da had a had a long conversation about this, right? So this is this is my take, right? They're growing together. The team is growing together. But I feel like they do not have a true leader, a true veteran on that team to grab guys by the helmets, by the face masks, and say, hey, look, we're here. Let's not mess this up because next year it's not. Huh? You got J.J. Watt. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, like I said. um, (laughs) What? What? Yeah. Yeah. They They don't have that. And, and. Kingsbury, I mean, he's doing, you know, he's doing better than what I thought he would he would do. However, he's not that personality to do that. So um they gonna have to they gonna have to learn together or they just gonna lose together. Either or do you think that person would have to be on the defensive side of the ball or the offensive side of the ball? It doesn't matter. It needs to be on both, but I would like for it to be on the defensive side. Okay. But um, somebody needs to, and especially Mr. Murray, Mr. Car seat. Yeah, I, I need you to stand on like five, six of them damn telephone books and stand tall in that pocket and play like how you play earlier in the season. Because yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of brain farts going on lately. So yeah, and I don't want to hear nothing about injuries. We ain't going to do that because. Uh, Three out of four, we had Colt McCoy, and we're not going to say Colt McCoy is better than 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 Carsey Kyler. We're not even going to start that nonsense. But, yeah, whatever, man. Stop. It. <laughs> you know what? I, what I say, and me and me and um, he talked about this yesterday. Is, and I think I brought up a little bit before the show is that these young Wonderkin coaches that you have, they're not the coaches like like you, you're going to. Teams will reflect their, their leadership, man. And at the end of the day, some of these young coaches, they're not bad. And they're learning the same way. You know, they're, they're trying to figure out that whole head coaching game. You know, my coach, um, uh, buddy with the Rams and um, with um, uh, Eric's team. The young coaches, we all have coaches in their 30s. 
Mm-hmm. So what happens is they're not coaches that are putting the hammer down on the team. You know, they're, they're not the coaches like a Belichick. Like, yo, listen, this is what we're doing. Or right. Tomlin, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing. You know, it, coaching means something in the NFL, man. In college, coaching doesn't mean as much. In college, you just get the best athletes. You're good to go. You're winning. Okay. But that coaching, man, it means a lot in the NFL, not just from a play, what plays to run, but the leadership, you know, so the team is going to reflect the coach. And, yeah, they joke about it all the time, man, but just do your job. That's the Patriot way. You come in there, and that's what you're going to do. And you're going to do it till you walk out that door. Whether you like to do it or not, you're going to do it. And that all comes down from Belichick. So, you know, it is what it is. I just think, you know, sometimes that leadership, a lot of these teams don't have, they have great players and they play well, but they don't have any leaders on the team. So, right? Because they'll let go of what you call, right? Um, what's my man? The running, uh, the wide receiver. Um, e, uh, number 11. Let's do my buddy. Uh, oh, he uh, was Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so he, he, he's not even around to talk to people. So, you know. You need something. That's all I'm saying. You got to have somebody there to get these young guys, um, you know, in the right space. Thanks. Um, Dan, um, talk about your Steelers defeating the Titans, who are on currently right now against the Niners. 1913, they win that game. Um, Dan, thoughts on Ooh. Hey, hey, thank you guys for that win. I'm glad you went for two. <laughs> but, yeah, like, that's ugly football, dude. Like, if they don't turn the ball over, what, four or five times? I mean, we couldn't even, like, score a touchdown. Ben had to run in it. I mean, we got Najee Harris. We can't even get that guy a touchdown. Our quarterback has to run it in. But if, if they we didn't get all those turnovers, like, I saw the one replay. And I know a lot of people are like, eh, I don't know if that was an interception. The dude fell on top of the other guy. <laughs> if, if that's a running back and he hits his feet he's still alive he can go right they didn't blow the whistle he never touched his knee didn't touch elbow didn't touch hey we'll take it you know we got kansas city next we got the dirty birds and we got the brownies so if we can win two to three we got a shot and it ain't gonna be kansas city unless Mahomes gets covid it's 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 it's, it's, <laughs> only, it's only going to one one team coming from this division. That's pretty much it. Y'all going to beat up on each other. And it's be oh, y'all can't beat. Oh, y'all can't beat the Chiefs. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, I, hey, if <laughs> my home, if, if my homes ain't playing, we got a shot. But oh, all right. Oh, because you on the field, y'all ain't winning. Probably all not. Right. C- c- we're all just right. not. Look at it. Look at it, like the last. I don't know. Three, four games. How many touchdowns have we scored? <laughs> I mean, it, the, like the, the San Diego game, yeah, it, literally, we could just like forego the first three quarters and just play 15 minutes because that's the we only play in the fourth quarter. I mean, the fact that we just can't get anything going until we're down by 10, down by 14. That's no way that's that's losing football because you're not going to come back every time. Like I said, if they didn't turn the ball over four or five times and we got those field goals, that would have been a uh, you know a loss too. And thank God they didn't have Henry because we can't stop a running back. He's gonna do back here for a couple of weeks if the if Tennessee makes the um the playoffs. Let me move right along. The Chiefs went to um LA at the SoFi Stadium and they beat the Chargers last Thursday night, 34-28. I think the Chargers, I believe the Chargers should have won this game. Now, this was an instance where the coach, <sighs> I, Sorry, Kyle. Go ahead. he just kept chasing the points to me and not, and go ahead. He just kept chasing the points. I don't know why he did that. Go ahead, E. What, what you mean chasing the points for? What you mean? I mean, they had ample, they had multiple opportunities of getting the points instead of instead of trying for you know fourth downs and touchdowns no they and just kick the field goal get the points well, get the certain points I, that's I, just my opinion as if i was a you know I, I, I'll, I'll say this 
Now, if you down in the red zone, yeah, I yeah, you 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 do that. You go for it on fourth down. I'm cool with that because that's their identity, right? That's how they beat Kansas City early in the year. They went for it on fourth down and they delivered. They just they did huh. not execute whatsoever in that red zone. Now that one time when it was uh, fourth down and you at your what was it the 25 or 28? Yeah, you should have you should have took that three. Um but in the red zone, yeah, you, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have no issues with that. Um, I, I will say, well, um, listen, the week season it. is crazy, man, because it's like it's everybody's so up and down. One week they look like world leaders, and the next no. week that. Go ahead, Kevin. No, you just, you just, you just can't tell. And um, let's give credit to Kansas City. I, I have been one. I'll raise my hand on this one. Kansas, I'm City. not doing that. I'm, I'm wait, go ahead, go wait, ahead. I'm wait, like, wait. Not, not in this game. Right, not in this game. Was? I feel like the Chargers beat themselves. It wasn't like Kansas City had this, 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 this force of a defense that just changed everything. If you look Sorry. at that game, the Chargers probably had about four or five hundred yards worth of offense. They just could not get in the end zone. So we, 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 look, I'm not going to co-sign that. Oh, we're going to give KC defense credit. Nah, bro. We ain't mm. doing that up in here. We the chasers. <laughs> we ain't doing all of that. That Take it. We chase it. Okay. I, I, you know what? I, I can't even. I can't. Let me move to the next game. Um, <laughs> the Colts, the Colts um, um, being on the Patriots, 27-17. Uh, to um, Carson Wentz, he continues to not. Who? No. Carson. Carson continues to Carson. No, he continues to manage the game. He does it. Carson went. <laughs> y'all, y'all was talking bad. I told y'all it wasn't all his fault. What did I say? It ain't all his fault. Nah, Carson this, Carson that. Nah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't say that either. We I just said that whole thing of you not wanting to be part of the team. When you're not starting, and then you just quit. That that that's what we had an issue with. But go ahead, go ahead, they turned his back on him. The, the, the Colts. I, I think the Colts to me is going. And this might turn his back on that ATM machine, though. Did he? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm he sorry. did with, with the cash in hand. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Um, the Colts uh, beat on the Patriots 27-17. I'm, I'm, I think the Colts squad is kept. They keep on playing well, man. One never knows in the playoffs. Just putting that out there. Just putting it out there. The Panthers traveled to Orchard Park to, to take on the Bills. They, The Bills <laughs> uh, look like they got back on track. They beat, they beat the Panthers 31-14. Real quick, um, real quick, real quick. What do the Panthers do next? <laughs> Break. Get rid of Cam. <laughs> Well, they're going to do that anyway. I thought Cam was leaving anyway, but they got to find out what they're going to do at quarterback. Um, the old line is okay. They don't really have a running back. Um, and I say that to say you can't do everything through McCaffrey. He's too light. Um, and you're going to lose him. You're going to kill him. You're going to lose him. You're going to make him retire early. Um, yeah. The Panthers are not a well-run squad, B. You know, they're just not anymore. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not um, the same. It's not the same. A lot of questions, too many questions, you know. You're uh, picking up players with, like, like you know, weird motivations, you know. You know, why this guy's a starting quarterback? Why this guy's this? Why you hired this guy? Weird. Like, you know, not not real, real stuff, man. You guys are not, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't think their fortunes look that good, but the reality is in that division, the last place team is usually the first place team the next year. So, yeah, that's true. Um, the Bills got back on track, thirty-one to fourteen. The Texans defeat the Jaguars after their their head coach um, has been replaced. Um, Jaguars look like they're headed for another dismal season. Uh, the Dolphins defeated the Jets, thirty-one twenty-four. Um, all the people talking about get rid of Tua and, and Brian, Brian Flores. Well, you know, the Dolphins have reeled off six, six joints in a row. So big up to the Dolphins. The Bengals defeated the Broncos 15 to 10 out in Denver. Um, Bengals keep trucking along. They keep winning. The, uh, Bengals might be the one end up winning uh, 
the division, man. But we'll see. They still got what it's three games left. Bengals record seven and six. They or should. Eight. Quick question: yeah, Did yeah. Anybody was it? Has anybody got any updates on Teddy Bridgewater? I think he's I'm not day to day. He's out indefinitely because of that. I I don't have anything. Um, Hold on. Okay. Yeah, we look it up real quick. Why Why I go to the next game? Um. DA 49 has handled the um, Falcons out in um, San Francisco or Northern California last week, 31-13. Uh, they currently, with 314 left, it's, um, the Niners are up 10 nothing against Tennessee. Uh, the New Orleans Saints, uh, shout out Tommy's Buccaneers last week, 9 nothing. Um, you know, Say again, DA. I'm sorry. If you can rush them with four, you can beat them. That's why, in some people's eyes, until the offense gets on the field, people think the Niners can beat them because, first of all, our secondary sucks, so we couldn't do that. But on the other side, if you can rush them with four and not blitz, that's been his kryptonite his whole time in the NFL. If you don't have to blitz them, you can beat them. If you got to blitz them, it's over. And that's how the right. Giants beat them twice in the Super Bowl. That front yeah. four just came and got him and put him on his ass. On the top. That's a that's a good point. Um, I know somebody's probably going to make fun of me when I say this, man. But I think the NFL did the Browns a disservice this last this past Monday. Um, the Raiders beat the Browns sixteen to fourteen in the five o'clock game. Um, Browns had a lot a lot of people because of the COVID, the, the COVID nineteen protocols place. They had a lot of guys out. And um, some of their players and their 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 coaches, you know, they they voice their opinion about it, and I I agree with them. Um, I think it was messed up that they did. It. Browns lost. Um, Raiders, you know, they continue to I guess try to right the ship after their tumultuous season of their head coach being gone. Uh, Mike, the Browns are they uh, contending your division or are they just pretending? They always been a pretender, but <laughs> but I don't see why you feel bad for them. Like the NFL, the NFL know what the hell going on. So the NFL, the the NFL, let everybody down. They shouldn't even be playing the way the numbers is going on. That's neither here nor there. Well, that's that's the point. The point being is that nobody should be playing when you got twenty seven right. players out on one squad. Somebody nobody should say should be playing. Hey, that's, that's my point, Michael. That's, hey, that's what I'm trying somebody, to say. Somebody needs to shut this down. We and the we Browns let they self down. What, them 20 something players, they wasn't being precautious. Well, no, no, I at least somewhere nah, somebody's, God, somebody's to blame. Ah, uh, I don't nah, know. Michael, about that one. Nah, I don't know because I don't know who was vaccinated and who wasn't, who's asymptomatic, who's not asymptomatic. Yeah, yeah you don't exactly, know exactly, exactly. Right. And that's and that's the point that DA was making earlier in the show when you know y'all say push for the vaccine back and, and i'm not going to get into a whatever whatever you believe that's what you believe but you still got the vaccine and some players are still showing no positive with the vaccine that's just a point that i'm trying to make make here so uh, go, ahead. Qu- go ahead was it wasn't it last year that denver almost had to play without a quarterback yeah and they and they I mean, the NFL set a precedent. They played the game anyway. Okay. Well, I mean, so, I mean nobody I, said I, nothing I, about that game. I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying if you look back, yeah, they, they've had the same situation before, and they just kept on going. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it is the Browns, and I, you know, I appreciate it, but. <laughs> <laughs> ah, damn, you so dumb. Hey, hey, that just moves us another spot up. Um, I mean, I get it. I get it. And you you are absolutely 100 percent correct on that. I, I just think the NFL is still even with that. I mean, you if you lose, you lose your quarterback, you lose. Um, I don't know. Back, the backup, the backup to the backup. And you almost I mean, play, that, play running. There's back. one thing to, for a quarterback and I get it. But when you got 29 or 20, however, 20, put, that, that's damn near the whole damn team. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting people from off the street to play. We're yeah. gonna move. We're gonna we're gonna move right along. The Vikings defeat the Bears. 
Uh, I think your man is out of there. I think the Bears head coach is gone. I think this. You, you think? Well, uh, I think they've had enough. Uh, I thought it was going to be this one, but um, um, they're gone. Um, next game, Washington defeats. Um, excuse me, Washington got defeated by the Eagles. Jalen Hurts played a really good game. That was on Tuesday night, twenty-seven to seventeen. The NFC, the NFC East. I don't think nobody's going to come go for the playoffs from there. Well. Hey, Kev. You got Dallas. I mean, they're 10 oh, and no, 4. No, no, I'm just saying, no, I'm saying Dallas <laughs> is going to be the only one. I'm, anybody else, no. Go ahead, okay. D-Go. I'm sorry. Hey, and, and these same teams that played on a Tuesday night got to come back around. Tuesday, on Sunday, yeah. And play again. But we talk about players. Safety. Oh, safety. Yep. Gotcha. I, I'm I got just, it. I I'm, got it. I, no, no, I got it. Don't, no problem. No problem. I just, I'm, just, I, I'm just part of the media. I just report. What's going on, man? You're right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I was just you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, go ahead, DA. Go ahead, DA. Uh, you about to uh, say no, no, no. no. Uh, he said the money machine keeps on ringing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the money machine keeps going. The machine keeps going, man. And these people, man, it's bigger than us, man. Like I try, I, I keep trying to. Explain, man. But go ahead, Kevin. Um, the Rams in the last game uh, on Tuesday night, the Rams defeat the Seahawks twenty to ten. Da, is it over for Bill Cosby? Is it over for Russell? Listen, listen. As, as we he, affectionately call him, Bill, Bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill, Bill is gonna change it up, man. And that's that's my man, Russell. I love Russell. I think he's a great quarterback. But Russell gonna have to give up something. Hold on, before DA, before you stop, people laughing. We call him um, Russell Bill Cotton. No, we're not calling him because of what y'all think. We're calling oh, yeah, him no, because, no. Of, because of his no. his homely, his, his 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 nature. Yeah. His, his, well, his, I don't I don't know his real nature because he's from Richmond, and right. all them Richmond Good dudes vibes. are a little bit funny. They a little bit gangster, which is on the low. But you know, because when I was down there, they were the number one uh, murder rate in the country. Period. This is 1987, 88. But what I'm saying for Russell is that he would always get up there. You ask him questions. Oh, well, you know, listen, we're, we're all, you know, go Hawks. Everything, oh, go Hawks. Yeah. Go Hawks. All right, what, what do you think about go Hawks? Go Hawks. <laughs> Never say anything to get in any trouble, right? So, and I, I listen. He says a lot without saying nothing. Uh, yeah, and, and you know the reality is this, man. The game. A lot of kids need to understand how to do that. Yeah, do what he does and shut yes. the fuck up. <laughs> All right. So that's just what it is. Um, lots of kids need to do that. They say too much, and like you're looking at them like, why? Why would you even say that? Like no one even asked you. Derek Jeter. Too much. Derek, Derek Jeter. Perfect. Yeah, Derek, Derek Jeter. Look, say hey, a whole lot of. Hey, Derek. What's going on? How's it? Hey, listen. Go Yanks, man. We're doing the best we can. You know, yeah. we just got to hit the ball a little bit better, play a little better defense. Yeah. Our pitchers are doing the best they can. Hey, guys, thanks. I got to go. 20 years of that. 20 yeah. freaking years. We don't know what, man. He could have been a male stripper after work. We wouldn't have known. Would not have known. But nope. the point I'm making is that, listen, man, um, Russell is going to change a few things up. Because as much as teams talk crap, there's every team but maybe 10 that would drop everything they got to get Russell. So um, there's going to be a little change going on. And I don't think we're going to let them go in our division. I don't think they'll let them go in their division. So I, I don't think the Niners, you know, which is D-Dub, the D-Dub, do you want Russell Wilson on, our, on the Giants? If we had He'll take him. He'll take him. He'll make your playoff team next year. D-Dub? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Eric, all, yo, listen, dog. All I feel like it is is going. You you get a guy, and all we doing is just putting a band aid or uh, what's that flex seal? Uh, that's what you doing, flex sealing. <laughs> and we just put not even a band aid. It's flex seal. Did and, you really like, think about that question? Like, did you really pretend like you was thinking about that? I know you wasn't pretending you was thinking about that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, me? Yeah, but take Russell. Russell. Me personally, I say, D, D is drinking. Listen, yeah. listen, no, no, that's his no, water. Listen, his cup. listen, he would get water. It's water, I, I told sir. Him. Water. <laughs> sir. Listen, I mean, 
I mean, we don't, there's no quarterbacks on the horizon. So I guess, yes, I probably, yeah, I would have to take them. I would have to. You, you guess. That is, you see, you got to be grateful. But listen, I, 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 you guys, I, I, I know, I understand, man. I, I understand. You guys, I, I'll take Russell Wilson. We'll take, take him, bro. Him. Take him. I, I'm just not, I, want I just know, I'm just not in love with this guy. And listen, I just want to start my team off with a, a young back and, and grow. Let's grow together. That's just me. What I'm thinking. I don't want offense, no quick, the offensive line. I don't want no quick fix, man. I'm just. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of the quick fix, and then we back in the same situation again. Y'all can get Russell without an offensive line and win the NFC East. That's a fact. Dog, this is short. That's short term. That it's just. It's just a short term. But and if you win the Super Bowl it, in one year, you got to talk about that's you, D. But your owner, he gets that Super Bowl next year. He's good for another five. Word, it's five years of him quiet. If y'all make the playoffs, y'all might give yourself like two years. Yo, years. yo. Ten years. Yo, but I, uh, I'm just uh, not uh, with uh, it. I'm yo, sorry, Cass. Hey, hey, I'm, yo, I'm we have it. hey, we have not been right. And I know DA's gonna get on me for this. I'm, yo, I'm we have it. not we have not been right. The Giants have not been right since they that pitcher. Yeah. All I'm gonna yeah, say yeah. is. Eli had y'all fooled in the thing and y'all knew what a franchise quarterback looked like, and now y'all want to act like y'all spoiled and shit. Listen, this is Sir. what happens. Sir. Teams lose. Sir. I was a Ravens fan when we had Kyle. In the night. I in know it's like the Bills. Teams go through losing periods. I'm about Sir. to, I'm about I'm about to mute Giants Michael Screen. Cut his mic off. Cut his mic off. Teams Michael. lose. Cut That's his what off. happens. Team That's that ether, the shit that make your soul burn. The Giants slow. went one of them two rings with Elon. Thought they had a franchise QB. Like, listen, oh, man. Y'all had, some, y'all had defense a good time. What? Just be happy. Sir, sir, sir. 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 I'm here. Yeah. This is coming from. <laughs> This is coming from a guy who got a running back for a quarterback, and they haven't done Ooh. nothing yet. And I'm, listen, progress. You I haven't think done nothing yet shit. with that quarterback, You sir. seen all them injuries and shit? Listen, sir, you got sir, MVP. Please. What Danny got? Danny don't even got a rookie of the year. Like, what's down? Sir, <laughs> let's 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 cut it out. <laughs> listen, we we gotta we gotta run because we're a little bit over tonight. Um, Mike, I, wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you later, Mike. Uh, that's oh, uh, that was that was. Ooh. <laughs> you, you, ain't, you ain't gonna get them, dog. No, you're not. You you ain't, really you ain't not gonna get them. My team only been around since '97, and we got two rings. I'm good. There's nothing you can say to me to upset me. <laughs> wow. I was there when we had Kyle Bowler. '97. <laughs> I can say, weren't they that, the Browns? Yeah, you use yeah. the use the Browns. What are you talking 96? about, dog? Listen, that don't Come count. On. The Browns' history is in Cleveland. We are the Ravens. That's oh, what? We are the Browns. Yeah, he dog. It? They had their yeah. colors. Listen, they want to keep their ugly ass colors in their history, so they got it, and now we got our team. So. Dog, but you, but you took you took all their players that dog, were on the they Browns. They didn't want them. <laughs> thank you, dog, thank you, Dad. You, you thank were you, the Dad. Browns, and Listen. and you had a murderer on your team. Stop that. Yeah. Hey. Okay, no, that's it. No, no. Wow, we getting all into that bag. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm taking it in. Yes, I am. Yeah. Kev, if yeah, you don't like right this shit, go there, yeah, I'm taking it all in. Gordon yes, yes. Lemon Pepper. I'm gonna take it. I will take no, it all no, in. No, 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 get, no, uh, no. At least we got a shooter. You got shot himself. Come on. Now. Whoa, Kevin. Come on now. Kevin. He went to jail and started playing with a jail. All right, all right, all right. Get it in. Get it in. Kevin, Kevin, we sweep at the wheel again. Hey, shout, <laughs> shout out to my man. Yo, Plex, you still my man, dog. College, where are Shockey at? College, yeah. no. College the football. Pilot do something. College Kevin, football. Come on, college man. College football. College football. College football. Hey, yeah. all the bowl games are going on right now. A um, lot of the um, lot of the tractors and a lot of coaches, um, they're a little warm with some of the um, athletes, excuse me, the student athletes for not participating in some of the bowl games. Um, me and Dan was on the phone yesterday, or we was texting yesterday. Dan's quarterback, what's your quarterback name, Dan? He's what's Kenny, Pickett. Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett he has decided not to opted participate. Out. He opted out of playing a what bowl is um the Pitt Panthers yeah. in? I don't know the name of they play yeah, yeah. Michigan. The Golden Michigan Crest State. Curry Rice and Peas Bowl. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The, the Dan, it's the Dan K uh Shine My Car Bowl uh out there in Pitt. The Dennis Rice Pitt and Peas Oxtails with Extra Gravy Bowl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They presented listen. by Golden Crust and Capital One. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll start. I'll start oh, with Eric. Shit. Eric, what, what's your wow. thoughts on, on some Holy of these? Holy uh, and Capital One. <laughs> what, what, what's my thoughts on what now? On 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 the on some of the players now. They they're taking their power and saying, "Yo, we're not. Yo, know, I'm not participating in this ball. It is it's an exhibition. It's a glorified exhibition game. I'm not playing." Thoughts? Um, it was coming. I mean, don't nobody care about these. Yo, man, you ain't playing for no chip. This is a participation bowl that they got going on. Why, why go out there and, and, and risk getting injured for, for what? And then you could throw your whole career in the NFL away, possibly. No, I don't, I don't blame them. It, it was coming. It was a, the, the, the writing was already on the wall, man. Oh, man. Um, Dan, what's your thoughts on, on your, your quarterback? Him not participating in. Well, like you said, you know, if you're not playing in the top what championship, the two, four teams, whatever, what's the point? If you're that good and the dude, the only reason he came back, not only to try to win a championship in the ACC, but he wanted to up his stock. Dude. So he knew he talked to Peyton and Peyton talked to some Peyton Manning and some other uh, GMs and asked, hey, what's my stock? And they said, hey, you're going to be a late rounder. So he said, you know what, I'm going back. And now he's possibly going the first round. Oh, yeah, he's probably so, going to so, so, I mean, for him to do it, I mean, to pass up what he can set his family up for in the next two, three years, opposed to playing a game that doesn't get you anything but bragging rights to the underwater basket weaving bowl of the century. I mean, who, care, who cares? I mean, they set this up. To, yeah, they, they set this up to happen when they – decided only four teams could play from the national championship. They picked the same four teams every damn year. Except that's that's except, a great point. Except one team, you know, there's always one outlier. Then all these other teams that they're playing, they're playing to win the championship, their conference. And other than that, they're done. Right. If, they, if they're good, they're going to the pros. There's no sense in them playing whatsoever. They already made the school enough money over the two, three, year, four years that they've been there. Correct. It, they don't need to make them any more money. They're getting that money in any way from the sponsors just by going to the bowl. The NCAA has created this vacuum. As you said, Dan, that's a that's an awesome point, um, which which will lead me to ask this question, guys, real quick, because we got only a few minutes. Do Are they going to expand this thing to 12 teams? Should they expand this thing to 12 teams? Or yeah, should they, they are. Cause, yes, because there's been more money. Period. 12 is yes. too many, but they should expand. They're, they're going to have it look like the damn basketball thing. And so it'll be Word. The they're going to do the Division <laughs> three shit and just play yeah, it yeah. out. <laughs> Start yeah. at the beginning of the year. Every game is – Playoff game, yeah. The playoff game. Yeah. You know, it, it, listen, guys. It, this thing with the bowl started when it, – it, it happened years ago, but they would just lie and say guys were hurt. So that <laughs> first and foremost, if you weren't playing for a championship, you were hurt, and you're not playing in the Cotton Bowl because it doesn't mean shit. You're going to the NFL, and if you get hurt playing in this game, yeah, there's nothing you're getting from the college. So they've been doing that for years. That's just kind of the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Leonard Fournette and 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 Buddy from um, McCaffrey both did it that year. The two best running backs, the two biggest guys, when they both opted out, I was like, oh, okay, it's okay now. Everybody's like, hey, look. And believe me, as soon as they did it, everybody did it. And like Dan said, why are you doing it? If you're going to the NFL and you got to go work out, right? And the NFL doesn't push back against this and say, hey, guys, you know, we want to see you in the bowl. We want to see you in the senior bowl. You know, they're saying, no, yeah, come out to California and work out in the block, block, block so you can run a 4 2 40 in the, in the combine. They're not pushing back to help the NCAA. So, listen, these kids like to get it, man. I'm going to go work out with this guy so I'm ready to play in that Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I mean, their they're kids are taking the power back, and, you know, good for them. Why play in something that doesn't have any value or meaning to you? D-Dub, we forgot about boxing. Two minutes. Jake Paul, uh, ex glorify exhibition. When he going to fight somebody, like, for real, for real? Yo, dog, uh, to be honest with you, I did not even watch it. I got up the next morning and I seen it, what happened. But then I looked 
somebody was this uh video was going around about how this might have been a staged event you know oh, God. and as you slow it down it, it looks i mean you could you could see it looks kind of crazy but uh, you know he drops his left hand and then you know jake comes around with the the, the overhand right and uh i mean he you know it appeared that he put him to sleep but you know, I'm not. Oh, I'm did. really just. I'm just not really into the whole this whole YouTuber this whole thing. It just takes to me. It takes away from the guys that be really grinding, um, who's really in it and doing their thing, compared to these guys that just you know hey. who got a name for uh, overnight uh, being a YouTuber. So hey, you know, I, I really don't have not, not too much to say about it. Go ahead, Dia. Question. So mm -hmm. the Mike Tyson thing is that's not real though. Mike Tyson, as far as what his hey, exhibition, Paul. yeah, this, this exhibition, dog. Real. You know, you know, you know, it's just not the same. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I'm just saying, I just you know, because they say Mike was going to fight him, and I'm like, come on, this is not this is not Mike in 1986 and 88. Is yeah, yeah this, this is not Mike still knock him out though. But yeah, um, <laughs> oh, the, oh, the, oh, the kid. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're not. Just I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, if it, I wouldn't want to see it though. I wouldn't. I don't want to handle him. Yeah. Huh? huh? I said Mike would handle him. Bing, bing. None of this I, stuff. I, 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 I would. I just wouldn't want to see it because I don't want to see my guy, um, Mike, get hurt yeah. like that, or you know, something that happened to any, any one of them. I don't yeah. think. It, oh, I but you have not said that about Evander Holyfield. He's 87 and he's still fighting. Oh no, actually, that, that actually, should be illegal. Actually, he he shouldn't be fighting, and he <laughs> looked like he's eighty. He looks very good, though. He was he's in very physical, good physical good shape, shape. But there's a lot of yeah. older men that's in good physical, shredded shape, but they not shouldn't be fighting Nation. professionally as a boxer. So right. you know, let's let's stop this this thing of you know we want to see the I don't want to see the old guys. And uh, uh, well, uh, and oh, no, oh no! This I, is not I, the big three in right. boxing. We're not. Doing I, that. I, I saw those text messages, and I saw you saying that these are gladiator sports, and we like when the lion <laughs> eats the king. I'm with boss man. Everybody was okay when Floyd was fighting all them old niggas. Now they now nobody want. Now they can't fight. I right. who who. Now, Flo hey, don't say nothing bad about my man Floyd. Yeah, man. I can't say nothing. I'll behave right, right, then. No more. Well, yeah, Floyd, I mean, there's no, there's no real, there's no real um danger. I don't think with the general public of anybody thinking that Floyd is going to knock any of these old guys out. So that's different. Uh, that's correct, Eric. That's, that's almost that's... like exhibition in itself because you know mm, Floyd yeah. ain't going to do too much. Yeah. His hands hurt now. That's my man. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. he ain't doing too. Come on, man. He yeah, can't grab not... a cup. So yeah, you know. I, I'm just I, I'm and the moral to this story, um, people out there, I'm just not into this whole uh. No, nah, I, I just I'd rather see the young boys come up and you know do their thing, yeah, yeah. actually fight, and you know yeah. you know let's see let's see something. But I think the money again, the money has messed up a lot of stuff and in, in all professional sports, and uh, you know you this is it is what it is. It messed but, up um, Frank Gore. It, it, it messed up Frank Gore because Frank Gore got beat the fuck <laughs> up. Oh God. <laughs> that was that was that was awful mean, by, by a basketball are... player. Yeah, you know, he got he got beat up by a basketball. Player. <laughs> beat the hell out of him, boy. <laughs> yeah, Deron Williams, uh, Darren Williams. Dar I, I wish he could have found his basketball game when he's playing with the Nets, but that's a whole other story. Never mind. Nah, now, yeah, hey, Deron Williams was nice, man. He has that. He was injury. cold. Yeah, he, like, was, he was nice until he got to the Nets, right? He man. was nice on the Nets is when he got older. He, he, went oh, he got old nice. overnight. Yeah, okay, right. Oh, hell you dog. He got you go. <coughs> Yo, he was missing in the play. Never mind. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> Ooh, it's, it's Mikey and Daryl tonight, boy. Yeah, they he they, was they missing in the play. Oh, right? People want to believe in Daniel Jones with their bad mouth D Will. Like, I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> no, no, no. You you didn't nope. hear me believe in nope, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> Michael, nope. where can we be found at? Nope, we're about hmm. to go. We'll be found at Sports Chasers Podcast. Nah, I'm here. Any... <laughs> about to have a podcast. So, uh, uh, you can find a Sports Chasers podcast on any social media, any platform that you stream your podcast on. May it be Apple, may it be Spotify, maybe even SoundCloud. Some of you SoundCloud is out there. Whoa, we can oh, be found whoa. anywhere. 
Ooh, drink me some water. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have to ask Michael no party shots, so I'm not. I'll just wait. What? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, um, Mike, party shots, man. It's great to have you back, man. Uh, I, know you've been, I know you've been grinding, man. Man, oh, man, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to y'all for back. holding it down while all I ain't been here. Um, nothing major. College basketball is back. My favorite time of the year. It's the holidays, so happy holidays to everybody, no matter what you're celebrating. You know, shout out to y'all. And uh, shout out my dog, Marcus Tally, Tally Red Productions. I got his shirt on today. Something a little different. And that's it. Shout out to Marcus, my man. Um, oh, yeah. E, James Everett, what you got for us? Pardon shots, bro. Yo, man, as always, great to be here. Sports Chases, we did it again. Dan, thank you for coming by. It's always a pleasure, man. Mike. Glad to see you back, Primo. You know what I'm saying? We had the full, we had the full staff in the in, in this mug tonight, man. It was looking good, man. Looking good. Part shots. As always, humans, look out for your fellow man, woman, and child. It's getting spooky out here again. It's, it's Christmas season. You know what I'm saying? Yo, just watch out, man. It, it takes nothing, nothing to do a good gesture for somebody, man. You That's know correct. what I'm saying? Nothing. You know what I'm saying? You all running around with your with your with your stank face, bitch faces on, all mad. What you mad for? What you, what you mad for? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, yeah, this is probably a lot of things to be mad about, yo, but there's a lot of things to be happy about. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's about it, man. I ain't I ain't gonna be too lucky tonight, man. That's it. Thank you, D. Eric. Um, D. A. What you got for us, sir? Hey, um, Mama Warren. My deepest apologies <laughs> on the language. Happy holidays to everyone. Um, don't spend too much, um, you know, but give what you got, man. I think people will appreciate, man. And, and a lot of times for us older folks, man, a lot of these young kids, and I'm, I mean 20, 30 something, they're down to take the words from us, man. So don't don't always be so quick to jump in your pocket to give them something. Older guys, older ladies, um, give them some of that knowledge that you've accumulated over the years. And um, believe me, they will take it and they'll be happy for it. All right? And that's it, everyone. Um, let's take care. And the Niners, yeah, the Niners. That's it on that note. Um, D-Dub? Yo, uh, great show again, Dan. Oh, Dan, thank you. Sorry. Dan, one more time. Glad to have you. Uh, what else I got? I got it. That's about it, man. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas, whatever you do. Uh, you know, um, but that's about it, Kev. Good show. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Dan, party shots. What you got for us, brother? I'd just like to thank everybody for having me back. Appreciate it. Had a good time. It's always a always a good time. Just want to wish everybody, you know, happy holidays. Be safe. Be smart. You know, and just take care. It's good enough, man. Hey, uh, my part of shots is just real simple. Hey, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate during this time of year, man. Um, you know, just be careful. Be safe. Doing whatever you're doing. Gather along with your families. Have a good time. Don't argue too much. You know, don't talk about politics. Definitely don't talk about the um, Giants quarterback, I guess. Have, oh, know, good God. Know. Oh, Jesus. Come on, God, God. Come on God. Start an argument, man. Damn. Um, no, don't talk about that. But, um, boy, y'all guys was good. Mikey and Daryl, man. Y'all, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that, Woo! Was funny. That, was, that, was, that was funny, man. Um, but, nah, just take care of one of yourself. Dan, my man, love you, bro. Thank you for coming through. On the hockey tip again, giving us great insight when it comes to hockey. Um, love you, man, and hopefully hockey will reconvene. Um, yeah. past Christmas. When, when they come back, Monday, Monday, yeah. Monday. So they reconvene, they get some stuff together, and uh, you know, hockey can reconvene. We didn't talk about the NBA, and we won't. Um, Christmas is here, so we'll the next podcast. We'll be back next year. We're not doing nothing next week. The guys have the next week off. 
And uh, we'll be doing some new things. Look for some bigger and better things come the first um, show that we do in January. We got some got some things coming up. We got some new things coming through. And um, you guys are really going to really, really like it, man. Like I said, like Mikey said, hit that like and subscribe button on the YouTube tip. Um, like it, share it. Um, if you like what you hear, we we definitely are, are trying to do something very different. We're not trying to be like the rest. We got our own lane and we like driving in our lane because, you know, we definitely look great doing it, man. So, but um, we love you all. Y'all be careful. Y'all be safe during this holiday season. Thanks to all my brothers on here. Love you all, man. Hey, I'm Kevin L. Warren, your host and moderator, man. On behalf of myself, Dorian D.A. D. A. Albritton, Mike Mills, uh, Daryl D. Del Warren, James the Angry One Warren, and Dan K., a hockey guy. We'll, we'll figure this. something out for you, Dan. <laughs> Dan and the underwater basket. <laughs> 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 Yo, this is the yeah. Sports Stances Podcast. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Y'all be good. Y'all be safe. Y'all be careful. Thanks again. Y'all be good. Money, man. Money. Kimba got 44 right now. Uh, what? Who?